Good morning, most esteemed Mr. Joe Thomas, President, the Choice Foundation, our distinguished guests of honor, Ms. Eva Gotts, Ms. Verena Freiburg, and Mr. Maud Scons, Mr. Thomas Jose, Director, the Choice Group, Ms. Rachel Ignatius, Principal, the Choice School Kochi, Mr. Jacob P. Ajit Matthews, Head of Aca Academics, Choice HQ, Dignitaries, Heads of different sections, Vice Principals, Parents, Teachers, and my fellow students. Welcome to a mesmerizing fusion of serenity, nature's symphony, and the harmonious rhythms of music and dance. I am Vedant Kanan. I am Kavya Naya. And I am Vanya Alexander. And we will be your hosts for this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the prayer song. is treasured, where joy dances in the air and where the radiance of childhood illuminates the path ahead. From the very first step through these doors, children are greeted with open arms and warm smiles, embracing them into a loving community that values their individuality and fosters their dreams. In this exceptional school, every milestone, big or small, is marked with a joyous celebration. From the first words spoken, to the first paintings created, from the achievements on the playground to the discoveries in the classroom. We recognize and applaud each accomplishment, empowering children to believe in their own abilities and unleash their limitless potential. Most cherished souls, we gather here today in the embrace of enchantment and grace as we embark on a journey that transcends time, space and the limitations of our earthly existence. Let's begin with an extraordinary spectacle, an invocation dance that beckons the divine and transports us to a realm where the ethereal and earthly entwine. May our collective energy elevate our souls, awaken our spirits and forge a connection between the celestial and earthly realms. Let the mystical dance begin.
ಗಣನಾಯಕಾಯ ಗಣದೈವತಾಯ ಗಣಾಧ್ಯಕ್ಷಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗುಣಶರೀರಾಯ ಗುಣಮಂಡಿತಾಯ ಗುಣೇಶಾನಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗುಣಾತೀತಾಯ ಗುಣಾಧೀಶಾಯ ಗುಣ ಪ್ರವಿಷ್ಟಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಕದಂತಾಯ ವಕ್ರತುಂಡಾಯ ಗೌರೀತನಯಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗಜೇಶಾನಾಯ ಬಾಲಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಚತುರಾಯ ಗಾನ ಪ್ರಾಣಾಯ ಗಾನಾಂತರಾತ್ಮನೆ ಗಾನೋತ್ಸುಕಾಯ ಗಾನಮತ್ತಾಯ ಗಾನೋತ್ಸುಕ ಮನಸೇ ಗುರು ಪೂಜಿತಾಯ ಗುರುದೈವತಾಯ ಗುರುಕುಲಸ್ಥಾಯಿನೇ ಗುರು ವಿಕ್ರಮಾಯ ಗುಹ್ಯ ಪ್ರವರಾಯ ಗುರವೇ ಗುಣಗುರವೇ ಸಾರಾಯ ಗೀತ ತತ್ವಾಯ ಗೀತ ಗೋತ್ರಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗೂಢ ಗುಲ್ಪಾಯ ಗಂಧ ಮತ್ತಾಯ ಗೋಜಯ ಪ್ರದಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗುಣಾತೀತಾಯ ಗುಣಾಧೀಶಾಯ ಗುಣ ಪ್ರವೇಶಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಏಕದಂತಾಯ ವಕ್ರತುಂಡಾಯ ಗೌರೀತನಯಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗಜೇಶಾನಾಯ ಬಾಲಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಮಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಫ್ರೇಗ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾರೀಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ವಿಂಡ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದ ಕಾರಿಡೋರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನಿಫಿಸೆಂಟ್ ಎಡಿಫಿಸ್ it permeates the very fabric of our surroundings filling the air with a sense of wonder and warmth just as flowers lean towards the sun we find ourselves instinctively drawn to this aura a radiant glow that illuminates our lives even from afar he is our mentor our master trainer our guiding light the wind under the sails of the choice school he is mr joe thomas and his wisdom like the delicate tendrils of a vine wraps around our thoughts inspiring us to grow and flourish in the petals of every blossom we catch a glimpse of his resilience his unwavering strength that serves as a beacon of enlightenment in all our journeys with profound wisdom mr joe stormis has laid the foundation for an educational approach that transcends the ordinary His visionary perspective and deep understanding of the ever-evolving world have shaped our curriculum, ensuring it remains relevant, forward-thinking and impactful. Through his insightful guidance, he has fostered an environment where knowledge is not just imparted but also cultivated with a deep sense of meaning and purpose. And we are privileged to stand on the foundations he has laid for us here at the Choi School. So, with great love, we welcome you to deliver the presidential address. So, good morning everyone. That is a perfect introduction. Thanks to all those three young minds who explained me or explained about me in a language that we all enjoyed to listen to and I really enjoyed that. That's the truth. So, dear Rachel, Ignatius, Principal of the Choice School, Cochin, all my Vice Principals, teachers who are my assets and non-teaching staff, dear children and my dear guests all the way from Austria who happens to be here on this day when you are celebrating the World Music Day and we are combined into with some dance too. So nothing wrong with that. You all know. you are probably you children are in the age group of 14 13 14 okay so you probably you all have seen me when you were in primary 
when you always to call me uncle jetty i hope you'll still call me uncle jetty would you yes or no yes that's good nothing wrong with that but you're growing up and this is what choice school is providing for you the conduit for tomorrow the tomorrow that is never seen in life but tomorrow that you will embrace the tomorrow that you will see creating the leaders who will go worldwide and carry the name of your nation and become successful global citizens so this is what your school and your teachers are providing for you and we will continue to excel in those areas and thus create more opportunities for you in terms of academic and not not academic excellence that we would be showcasing for you accordingly you know our teachers are being well you know i would say grouped under my vision to go and accept training like we train you like teachers train you this year we're going to focus on teacher training not that they don't know how to teach of course they know how to teach however they also need to have jt uncles kch first being knowledge so that they can talk to you they can communicate with you they can walk the journey all over the world with you through whatever tools that we will be providing for you so we're going to have that as a focus for this academic year next is focus on sports you children you all have to get out and play sunny sir i need that promise from you we have an excellent sports leader here sunny sir who is going to get you to become more active so that that h factor comes in, the health you need to be healthy you need to be having a perfect lifestyle so we have all the facilities here from children's pool to adult pool to soccer to basketball to everything so that has been there but i would like you to utilize it i want to see more children in the gymnasium i want to see them in the gym and i want to see them respect that h factor and teachers my dear teachers please encourage our children we don't want our children to be ill at early stages of life we want you the world needs you you are the tomorrow so you got to be healthy you got to carry your life with the concept of knowledge a perfected character where nobody will tell a lie my principles of teaching at the choice school to you children is never lie never be afraid to talk the truth and never hide and that's where you create the best men and women that we need in this world so i'm not going to talk too much and bore you children we're going to have some fun here today my dear friends from austria thank you so much for being here this is a blessed organization thousands have passed through the portals of this institution thousands and i am the last man and i am the man who has to stand to the last breath i have to protect and guard this institution to protect its integrity to protect the character of this institution and i commit to all of you today that i am committed i am recommitted and i'm always there for you children and the teachers and the parents so thank you so much for being here let's have some fun some dance some music and i love to listen to music let's see who the drummer is today i'll be watching him very carefully yeah because you know i'm a drummer too so let's see how things work and all the best have a fantastic time ahead thank you thank you sir for captivating our hearts and minds with your wisdom knowledge and the sincerity with which you share your thoughts your words inspire us to see the world through a new lens challenge our preconceived notions and encourage us to embrace growth and change we are greatly honored to have you as our source of inspiration and our guiding light in our collective an individual journey up next we will witness a magical performance an extraordinary symphony a celebration of cultural diversity 
unity and the universality of music. These melodies will weave tales of love, loss, triumph and longing. Stories that transcend language barriers and resonate with the deepest recesses of the human spirit. Joining them is the star singer fame Joel Mary from the Tiruvella School. Brace yourselves for an unforgettable performance that will transport you to realms of unparalleled beauty, ignite your imagination and leave an indelible mark upon your hearts. Enjoy. Thank you sir for captivating our hearts and minds with your wisdom, knowledge and the sincerity with which you share your thoughts. Your words inspire us to see the world through a new lens, challenge our preconceived notions and encourage us to embrace growth and change. We are greatly honored to have you as our source of inspiration and our guiding light in our collective and individual journey. Up next, we will witness a magical performance, an extraordinary symphony, a celebration of cultural diversity, unity and the universality of music. These melodies will weave tales of love, loss, triumph and longing. Stories that transcend language barriers and resonate with the deepest recesses of the human spirit. Joining them is the star singer fame Joel Mary from the Tiruvella School. Brace yourselves for an unforgettable performance that will transport you to realms of unparalleled beauty, ignite your imagination and leave an indelible mark upon your hearts. Enjoy.
of sound and emotion where boundaries dissolve and music becomes a universal language is a pilgrimage worth living for and we are sure that the nightingales of the choice school did leave you wanting for more but the celebration doesn't end here let us now move on to a highly anticipated event an electrifying forum an intellectual clash of ideas where we shall delve into the contentious and timely topic of de-dollarization in an era characterized by geopolitical tensions, economic interdependencies, and shifting power dynamics, the role of the United States dollar as a dominant global reserve currency has emerged as a subject of intense scrutiny and debate. This morning's debate will serve as a crucible for the clash of divergent perspectives and ideologies on de-dollarization. We would like to invite our spirited panel of debaters to the stage. With great honor, we would also like to request our most distinguished Mr. Joe Stormis with his profound knowledge and expertise in economics, finance and geopolitics to moder moderate the debate. Sir, we are sure that with your insights founded upon meticulous research and critical analysis will lay bare the complex web of factors surrounding this pivotal issue. So without further ado, let us embark on this intellectual odyssey, brimming with passionate discourse, rigorous analysis, and the pursuit of truth. May our words be sharp, our ideas be illuminating, and our interactions be characterized by respect and intellectual integrity. Let's spar. Good morning, sir. I am N. Aditya Dev, and this is Ashik Arjun. And together, we'll be speaking about the topic, is de-dollarization a reality? So the US dollar is currently the world's reserve currency, which means that it's the most widely used currency for international trade and finance. This gives the US government a great deal of power, as it can use the dollar to influence the global economy. De-dollarization 
would reduce the US government's power and make it more difficult for the US governments to impose sanctions in other countries. The de-dollarization movement is gaining momentum as more countries are looking to reduce their reliance on the US dollar. This is due to a number of factors, including the US's use of economic sanctions as a weapon, the volatility of the dollar, and the desire to reduce the US's influence on the global economy. Several countries are making efforts to reduce the reliance on the US dollar. One such nation is China. China has expressed interest in setting up the Asian Monetary Fund to reduce reliance on the US dollar as well as the International Monetary Fund. China has sealed deals with countries like Russia, Vietnam, Sri Lanka, Thailand and Japan that allows trade to, be to settle directly in Yuan, pushing the US dollar out of the equation. In 2016, the IMF added the Yuan to its special drawing rights basket, which is a basket of currencies used to determine the value of the SDR, which is a reserve asset created by the IMF. China is also developing a digital currency called the Digital Yuan, which could be used for domestic as well as cross-border payments, helping to reduce its reliance on the US dollar for international payments. Russia is also pushing BRICS to develop a common currency. Together, BRICS not only has a 24% share in the global economy, but they also represent 40% of the world's population. If they come up with a common currency, it will pose a stiff challenge to the USD, as the BRICS countries, the member nations of BRICS, would have more control over their own economies, making it difficult for the US government to impose sanctions on BRICS countries collectively as well as individually. BRICS countries could have a major impact on the global economy. This is why several nations, several developing nations, are seeking to become a member nation of BRICS. One such country is Iran. Iran is a developing nation who has control of over a quarter of the Middle Eastern oil reserves and has the second largest global gas reserves. Iran has been expanding trade with Russia and China in its local currency and has been looking to reduce its reliance on the US dollar, partly because of the imposition of sanctions, economic sanctions on it by the United States. Several other nations like Bangladesh, Bangladesh and Indonesia, who are also developing nations, are also trading in their local currencies with nations like Thailand, Japan, China and Russia. And this is, is a step to move to, away from the US dollar and trade in their local currencies internationally. Now, Ashka would be speaking on India's steps towards de-dollarization. India has been promoting the use of rupee internationally. In 2022, RBI allowed foreign banks to open special rupee Vostro accounts with Indian banks. This will make it much more easier for foreign companies to hold and transact in rupees. The RBI has also been diversifying India's foreign exchange reserves away from the US dollar. In 2014, the dollar accounted for 68% of India's forex reserves and this has dropped to 55% in 2022. India has also been working towards the internationalization of the rupee. In June 2022, RBI established a system to simplify cross-border transactions, enabling foreign commercial borrowings using India currencies, particularly in the case of masala bonds. India and UAE have been looking for ways to conduct non-oil trade using the rupee. Last December, Sri Lanka had come to an agreement to use rupees for all international trade with India. India has also made an arrangement with Russia, the rupee ruble payment uh, system. This was rolled out to settle dues in rupees rather than dollars or euros. But this proved to be unsuccessful, though the, uh, the trade among the two countries did take place using dirhams. RBI has also set up a mechanism called the International Settlement of Trade in Indian Rupees. India has been encouraging her trading partners to use other currencies such as euros and yuan. India in 2022 signed a currency swap agreement with China worth $55 billion. The introduction of a rupee-based international payment mechanism such as the rupee card aims to boost global usage of Indian currency. India has also been fostering regional economic corporations, particularly through initiatives like BIMSTEC and ASEAN. These efforts aim to enhance financial integration within the region. India has been a victim of US sanctions in the past, and this has made India much more cautious on relying heavily on the dollar. The RBI has also been working with other central banks in the region to develop a payment system that would allow for the use of local currencies in trade. Saudi Arabia plays a really important role in de-dollarization. 
In 1917s, the Petrodollar Agreement was signed. In this agreement, US would provide military supplies and equipment to Saudi, while Saudi agreed to use dollars for all oil agreements. But recently, Saudi Arabia's finance minister had expressed that the nation was open to oil, trading oil in different currencies beside the US dollar. This is happening for the first time in 48 years. Saudi is the world's largest oil exporter, and if they were to sell oil in any other currencies, it would force countries to hold less of the dollar and would reduce the demand for the dollar, and in, in order, in, uh, it would also make it harder for US government to finance its debt. China buys 18% of their oil from Saudi. In the first 10 months of last year, they spent $55 billion. If these transactions were to be made in any other currency, it would weaken the dollar. Saudi is also looking to increase trade with China and other countries who are not really friendly with the US. They've also been promoting the use of real as a regional currency. De-dollarization is soon to be a reality and this is so evidently seen as we can see the share of the dollar dropping in global forex reserves. In 2001, the dollar accounted for 73% of the global forex reserves and by 2023, this share has fallen down to 58%. This is a 20-year low. Central banks around the world are stocking up on gold. 2022 was a record year for gold purchases. Over a thousand metric tons of gold were purchased and this is the highest since record keeping began in 1950s. India is one of the top countries to do so. Reserves of gold used to be only 11% and this has shot up to 15%. Like the Eurozone, African countries are also looking to move away from the dollar. The African Continental Free Trade Area aims to create one single market for goods and services across the African continent. One of their key objectives is to promote intra-African trade using local currencies. Russia and China are driving forces for de-dollarization. We all heard about the Russia-Ukraine war, and as a result, US and its allies have imposed strict economic sanctions on Russia, including cutting off its access to the SWIFT payment system. Russia was forced to find alternative, to, uh, alternative ways to conduct international trade and financial transactions. Putin, during his summit with Xi Jinping, said he will significantly increase the trade among the two countries by 2030. Putin also threw his weight behind the wider globalization of the yuan. This is a move aimed at weakening US dollar's power. The trade among the two nations had touched a record of $190 billion last year. Most of these transactions have happened in Chinese and Russian currencies. Therefore, me and Aditya are of the opinion that de-dollarization will happen. If not tomorrow, then soon. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Mohammed Yusuf Ajmal, and this is my teammate, Jacob Aiju. We are here to talk about de-dollarization being a distinct dream. The US dollar is the currency behemoth of the world no currency comes close to it. I'm talking in terms of usage, oil trade, goods trade and most of the world trade is settled in US dollars. 90% of the forex trade is done through dollars and 40% of all debt is issued in dollars. Dollar was set as the benchmark for currency after the Second World War through the Bretton Woods Agreement. Before this agreement, the benchmark for currency was gold. Dollar became the most dominant currency in the world after this agreement. In 1970, the dollar became the most dominant reserve currency in the world. There are over $2 trillion in circulation and half of that is beyond the US territories, which is majorly held by China. Now, talking about the competitors of US dollar, we have the Chinese Yuan. We believe Yuan is a delusion as not even 5% of the world's 12 trillion held as forex reserves are in Yuan compared to 58% held in US dollars. There are 336 billion dollars in 336 billion Chinese Yuan in circulation and one third of it is within Russia. But this does not make a major change 
Russia has been already out of the dollar system because of the invasion in Ukraine. Other than Russia, the 336 billion uh, yuan is held with Mexico, Chile, South Africa, Switzerland and Israel. India does not want to join this list because 336 billion is just 60% of India's total reserves which is about 595 billion in which 517 billion is already in US dollars. So India does not want to join this list. Now moving on to another competitor of US dollar, we have the BRICS currency. The problem with BRICS currency is that it can only, it can only be used to purchase imports from BRICS and BRICS plus countries. It cannot be used to purchase US treasury securities not to pay off foreign debts. It cannot be converted into dollars or any other currencies. And it is impractical to use BRICS in foreign direct investment as foreign direct investment generally involves raw materials, uh, generally involves construction and infrastructure projects which requires lots of raw materials which cannot be purchased using BRICS currency. As a result, BRICS currency would not make an effective reserve currency because of its lack of convertibility and its limited usability. Handing over the mic to Jacob H. Continuing from where Yusuf left off, I would like to emphasize that BRICS is showing an illusion of friendship due to some concerning reasons. But before that, I would like to give two different examples of completely different unions. One of them is the Quad, which consists of US, Japan, Australia and India. This group shows that India has been trying to maintain a good relationship with the US, while on the other hand within BRICS, the relationship between India and China is rather strained. There are ongoing territorial disputes over the territory of Arunachal Pradesh between China and India. And China has also been salami slicing land of India multiple times. This poses major uncertainties between China and India's relationship. Another union known as the G7 is a group with similar goals such as world peace and easier trade. But BRICS, when it came into existence in 2006, came with the objective of promoting peace, security, development and cooperation. But there are some reasons on why BRICS are not what they say. The growth of China's economy is tremendous as we all know and outweighs the other members' contribution to the world economy. China's GDP stands at a whopping high of 16 trillion dollars, which is more than double the cumulative GDP of the other four members of BRICS. But unfortunately, this makes the union seem like China with its partners rather than a union that is members with equal powers. There has also been a decreasing trend of trade happening between the members, but on the other hand, there are reports that the trade between the members is on a decline and those with the EU and US is rising and China's trade with the rest of the world is even higher in terms of numbers in comparison. Furthermore, there are markets where the members have almost equal influence in the market share, such as in the clothing field as we see in China, India and Brazil. In addition, there are military equipment markets where China, Russia and Brazil sell products. Research and development results have less impact since these countries can re-engineer and create similar technologies as we recently saw with Tesla. In Tesla, a Chinese employee was accused of stealing 300,000 files relating to the autopilot source code and sending it to a company called Xpeng, which is an automobile technology company in China. This as a result, this there is less cooperation and more competition between the members. The differences between these countries pose a bigger problem as each member of this union has different cultures, economies and rates of economic development. Similarly, the standard of living and the definition of poverty all differ. When there is a lack of understanding of the priorities between these members, there will be no room for sharing useful inputs. In addition, issues are prevailing regarding the terms emerging economies. As amongst the group, some countries tend to perform better than the rest. Even worse, some have shown no signs of significant improvement. Now moving on to the next competitor of to the US dollar is the Bitcoin. 
and Bitcoin, in our opinion, will not be a reserve currency of the world as it is a very volatile currency and it is neither issued nor regulated by any financial institution. It is Another concern is that all transactions made in Bitcoin are anonymous and this is why a large amount of Bitcoin is being used in the dark web to conduct illegal transactions. Hence, we cannot differentiate between the illegal and legal transactions made in Bitcoin. We feel de-dollarization is not good and not desirable due to some reasons as the US dollar stability provides confidence in global markets including India's like we said before and de-dollarization may introduce uncertainty and disrupt the local economy. And de-dollarization requires renegotiating contracts and trade partnerships potentially disrupting established relationships and supply chains. Now shifting from the US dollar as a reserve currency poses challenges in diversifying reserves which could be risky for countries reliant on its stability which country like India trusts. De-dollarization may erode market confidence in the local currency, potentially signaling economic instability and affecting investor perceptions. And finally, transitioning from the US dollar obviously requires costly adjustments to existing financial systems and infrastructure which can act as a deterrent. The fact remains that the US is and likely to remain the strongest economy in the world. And with that, we come to the conclusion that de-dollarization is a distant dream and the dollar isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Thank you. I'm quite happy today, you know, because my vision seems to be working. Padma, good job. Let's put our hands together for our... Come, come, come. This is uh, Padma Miss who is in charge of our commerce and economics department. She has even taught Thomas when he was here. And uh, I always talk about, you know, enhancing possibilities of knowledge. And today I'm very happy. Only thing is the children, I don't know if you understood, uh, because you're 13 and 14 years of age. Perhaps this should be done at a senior school level. But I think both the team did a good job. I can give you my... 12 standards? Oh, 12 standard economic students are here? All right, good. So this is a good insight into the world economy and the subject of debate is de-dollarization or maintaining dollar as a reserve currency of the world, right? So a lot of things were discussed here. I'm not going to take any side. I can't take any side because I, I live in India and I partially live in the US. And I go to Austria, and I go to Germany, and I go to UK, I go to China. So I'm like a global. I'd, I'm not being a politician here. Politician speaks like this, right? Neither here nor there. But I'm not going to take the stand. But I'll explain to you my views. Okay. Let's imagine one of you um, get win a lottery in Indian rupees. You won a big lottery. And there are laws in this country because India's currency or foreign trade or foreign currency is restricted to the extent that only conversion of currency is allowed only on trade account, not on capital account. So you cannot sell your house in India. I'm coming to the basics. Are you all learning? Okay. I, okay, I cannot sell a factory here and take that Indian rupee and take dollars to another country. That is restricted because only trade account is allowed. Now, when these countries have restrictions, what does this mean? You have four areas that we had to look at. You know, one of those currency zones, one is Eurozone. BRICS don't have a currency according to me, which is settled at all. And Yuan is completely a domesticated currency within the four boundaries of China. And Indian rupee. Indian rupee, I don't think our government or our uh, reserve bank is even thinking or considering to con make it convertible, fully convertible. On the contrary, I'm personally a little concerned or I was wondering rather, with India's reserves, as you said, being at $595 billion or $600 billion, that is only enough for our imports for about five months. 
Now, what do we import? Eight, I'm talking about India first and then I'll come to the US. 85% of our imports is crude oil. Being 1.4 billion people and a growing demand for, you know, generating power and also fueling our automobiles. 85% we are dependent on fuel imports. And fuel imports today, since the Ukraine war, which I am completely against the war. In today's world, nobody talks about war or invading a country overnight for whatever reason. You want to call NATO or NATO's presence, that's a different subject altogether. But unheard of India walking into Sri Lanka and taking over the country for whatever reason, because they are a smaller nation. So when you look at the geopolitical issues, geopolitical issues are the ones that triggers the market shocks. Market shocks are in terms of stock markets reaction, also currencies reacting. So how do you see people when I, if I hit a lottery, I want to keep my money if it is a reserve, if I can transfer the money out. Let's imagine if I win a lottery in Dubai. Dubai, you can transfer money out anywhere you want, unlike India. Where do you keep your money? In a safe locker. That's what you always look at. Where is my money safe? If you have money in your home, you will keep it in a safe locker. You will not leave it in the open. Currencies like or economies like China and Brazil and India and Russia and South Africa and Africa, these are all countries of high risk. America is also in a way geographically it is blessed to an extent that no invasion is possible in America overnight. See the landlocked areas of Europe, if you see. Tomorrow, for example, the Russians can walk into any European country, like the Hitler did during the Second World War. So whereas America is protected by two seas on the side and Canada, you know, overseeing US as an ally. So it is impossible for anyone to create an instability in the American you know, American safety in terms of air attack or sea attack or land attack, which means geopolitically America is absolutely the safest place in the, on earth. Okay. Now, India you take, we have land left on the western side, we have Pakistan, eastern side, we have Bangladesh and over the northeast, you have access to China. It's all Areas that are vast, which anyone can come and with the way Mr. Putin has taught the world that you can do your, you know, piece of, go steal somebody else's property by walking through, that has again triggered a lot of situations. So why didn't UK join Eurozone? They have their own reasons for it. Uh, Denmark is still not joined the Eurozone. There are differences of opinions because they feel that that they don't want to be in the Eurozone because in the Eurozone itself, a lot of countries are joining and those countries don't have basic reserves or a stable GDP. See, Latvia, you take, you take smaller nations, you know, they're all now trying to come under the cover of Euro, which is also weakening the power and the reserves of Euro. US dollar on the contrary. US dollar on the contrary, today is a reserve currency out of India 600 billion, 400 billion are invested in US securities because Indian government also feels that dollar is the main basket of currency that is more stable and it is not susceptible to geopolitical issues like any other nations. So I'm not going to take a side with both of you whether de-dollarization will happen or, or it should continue. However, I think you both spoke very well. Uh, I think uh, we, we must put our hands together for both the teams. I can't, uh, I can't, I cannot declare a winner, but let's talk about India as a close. Okay. India's exports today is about 35 billion dollars a month. That's it. Our imports are about 52 billion dollars a month. So we have a trade gap, a trade deficit. It's called current account deficit. Now, how is that being bridged? That is being bridged, this is how one is through FDI, foreign direct investment. 
and invisible earnings from non indian who live abroad and they send remittances here so that is how that gap is being filled but still there is a gap and another thing i must share with all of you is the indian population the new generation is also now looking at different you know lifestyle they are going abroad they going for vacation and like the past they all have credit cards indian credit cards they can go swipe credit cards buy louis vuitton bags for $8000 and that has been going on for some time and there is a scheme in india again it's called lrms scheme by the reserve bank where each individual can only take maximum of $200000 a year $250000 a year outside to the country for the purposes of education health investments into smaller you know real estate and also for your personal things so what happened now last year indians who travel abroad increased threefold and indians spent last year first quarter alone close to 25 billion dollars in credit card payments for india we sent a shock to the reserve bank they said my god we already have a current account deficit our exports are 35 billion imports are 52 billion and on top of that if money has to go outside the country from our reserves through you know people signing indian credit cards and creating they, they created a new rule starting july 1st the new rule is you want to go and spend more than 600000 rupees a year in overseas you got to pay 20% tds 20% so if you stay in a hotel which is going to cost $200 you got to add another 20% to it of course you'll get the money refund at the end of the year this is again to discourage flight of dollar capital out of india because so india is also dependent on dollars the dollarization is a long shot and i don't think america should be looked at as a country who punishes people through sanctions who will be taking any action against against russia for for what they have done obviously there has to be sanctions and when china is trying to take over taiwan there has to be sanctions because india's sanction won't work the most powerful nation in the world only can bring in sanctions now china is trying to get taiwan ukraine is already i'm sorry ukraine is already under the control of russia and there are issues with economies in africa india has tensions on the border with china so with all this kept in mind my view is the status quo will remain will continue dollar will be the world's reserve currency <coughs> of course euro is competing and saudi or iran anyone for that matter is not accepting any other currency for the for the crude oil other than us dollar because saudi has a lot of investment in the us securities so unless and until something really goes drastically wrong in the us economy which i doubt this is going to continue and another thing you got to understand there's a saying when america gets cold the rest of the world gets fever because that is how powerful their economy is even though their deficits are 23 trillion dollars <coughs> children are getting bored now you know we'll talk this uh, did, did the 12 standard students pay some attention here you did okay so dear children this is a great topic that the, that the team brought up thanks for the initiative by rachel and team and patma i hope we will have more opportunities like this this is this jt's curriculum jt's curriculum is not the textbook curriculum jt's curriculum is real life curriculum and i'm so proud and happy that you guys did some research and threw up some excellent data here i could learn too as well so thank you once again we will have more debates like this again in the future all right thanks that was exhilarating wasn't it yes indeed 
the awe of the depth of knowledge, passion and the intellectual rigor exhibited by each participant, their clash of perspectives and their pursuit of truth have made this debate an extraordinary platform for intellectual growth and discovery. Thank you JT sir and all other participants for your unwavering dedication and your passionate participation. Now, for all you lovers of the nostalgic allure of the American West, we have the pleasure of presenting to you a captivating Western band from the Choi School Thiruvalla, a group of musicians whose enchanting tunes will transport you to a world where cowboys roam the plains and love stories unfolded under starlit skies. Settle into your seats and allow yourself to be enveloped by the rhythms of this extraordinary Western band. Let the music gently carry you to a place where dreams and melodies intertwine. A place where the spirit of the American West lives on, eternally captivating hearts and stirring souls. Let the journey begin.
that was out of the world wasn't it this this morning we have for you yet another mesmerizing spectacle of movement grace and cultural fusion prepare to embark on a journey that transcends borders as dancers draw inspiration from the rich shades of eastern traditions infusing it with the vibrant elements of modern choreography and diverse influences presenting to you an extraordinary eastern fusion dance performance an exhilarating showcase that seamlessly blends traditional dance forms with contemporary flair a breathtaking tapestry of movement and expression in this captivating fusion ancient dances meet urban beats classic elegance intertwines with dynamic athleticism and centuries old stories find new life on the dance floor their movements fluid and precise will tell stories of ancient cultures mythical tales and profound human experiences each step each gesture and each expression serves as a brush stroke painting a vivid tableau of emotions and narratives so fasten your seat belts and prepare to be captivated by the extraordinary Takita takajam, takita takajam, takita takajam, sagasani sani pani pamagasa, trutani din, 
Life is like a piano. The white keys show happiness and the black shows sadness. But as we go through life's journey, we learn that the black also makes a lot of music. Now this is for all you music enthusiasts and the lovers of the wild wild west. Welcome to an electrifying show of foot stomping rhythms, soulful melodies and the unmistakable spirit of the American frontier. Now we have the distinct pleasure of presenting to you an extraordinary musical performance by our dynamic western band a group of immensely talented musicians who embody the essence of the west in their electrifying tunes with every note they strike every string they pluck and every beat they unleash they evoke a kaleidoscope of emotions that will leave you captivated and yearning for more prepare to be swept away by their irresistible melodies let the show begin
with you throughout the day. Our esteemed principal, Ms. Rachel Ignatius, is a shining beacon of warmth and positivity who stands as a pillar of inspiration for each of us. With an ever-present smile and a genuine demeanor, she embodies cordiality and engagement, making every interaction with her an, up an uplifting experience. Her radiant smile welcomes us with open arms, creating an atmosphere of acceptance and inclusion. 
Miss Rachel possesses the remarkable ability to brighten even the cloudiest of days, infusing joy and optimism into the school's very foundation. And we are truly fortunate to have such an exceptional individual at the helm of our school. Let me now invite our beloved principal, Madam Rachel Ignatius, to address the gathering. Good morning, Just Thomas, sir. Eminent guests, Ms. Eva, Mr. Moritz, and Ms. Verena, Mrs. Elizabeth Jose, Mr. Thomas Jose. Thomas Jose is already giving me. Uh, actually, the guests was, you know, they were supposed to leave the campus by 11. Because they were in a school, they extended the time by half an hour, and now it's 40 minutes already. Thank you so much for uh, spending this beautiful morning with us. We are so privileged and honored to have had you uh, with us this morning because celebrating Music Day and that too, my children, children wherever you are, you did an amazing job. <laughs> Simply electrifying performances and perfect. The dancers, the singers from both Cochin and Tiruvalla, teachers who've trained them were fantastic. You saw to it that everything was done to perfection. Thank you so much. It was just perfect. The children who spoke, the children who danced, the children who sang, everything to the great team. Very well done. Thank you, Joe Thomas, sir. Yes, you can put your hands together for the children and for the team who worked. Thank you. Jose Thomas sir, thank you so much for this opportunity. I feel proud, privileged and honored to be standing here, you weren't here for the induction, but truly it's an honor for me to be back in this institution, to be standing here addressing uh, my children and uh, you know, at this post, being at this, you know, uh, holding this responsible, coveted post and the, although this is not the uh, uh, time to be saying this, I will give this my all. And Thomas, I'm keeping my words so I'm not going into any speech but before that, I would like to invite our eminent guests onto the stage for to, uh, to accept a small token of our appreciation for having spent their valuable hours with us. Yes, Ms. Eva, Mr. Moritz, and Ms. Verena. And may I request Mr. Ajit, Mr. Thomas Jose, and Ms. Konimol, Mrs. Elizabeth Jose, to come up on. Can you, can you please come to the center of the stage? And uh, yes, we have something special. We have something called a ponada. Uh, it's, it's a shawl that's, uh, you know, covered over your shoulder. It's a mark of respect. It's a traditional South Indian way of honoring a guest. Okay, that's what we're going to do. And then we have something special for each one of you. Thomas. thrilled if you could share your experiences with us. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Mrs. Elizabeth Jones, and thank you, Ajit, sir. First of all, thanks for having us, and um, everybody on stage did so well and so amazing. We coming from Austria didn't expect that, so really, um, a hands to yourself. Um, I'm really amazed and we're amazed how well you did and um, just up to perfection. Thanks so much for having us.
came clearly to my mind here, um, passion and creativity and um, perfectionism is really part of the game. And um, me being really passionate, but, uh, passionate about what I'm doing, that's basically what the storyline of life is. Keep on striving, keep on doing what you love and you will succeed. You have the best foundation ever and um, yeah, much of love from Austria and um, you are in the best hands ever within um, this Choice Foundation and um, from my point of view you have basically the best baseline to success in life. Thanks a lot for having us. Uh, speaking of my experience today, so I had goosebumps all the way through this performance. It was really, really great. So thanks a lot and just to keep it simple, continue what you are doing here. It's really great. Thanks a lot and thanks to the whole team and the family for having us. Um, it's really great to see what you are doing here. And thanks to you, students. You kids rock. That was great, thank you. Thank you, ma'am, and honored dignitaries for your words and your unwavering belief in the potential that lies hidden in each of us and that fuels a collective sense of empowerment and encouraging us to reach for our dreams and embrace our true potential. Dear students, teachers, and esteemed guests, as the curtains close on this remarkable show, we are filled with a profound sense of joy, accomplishment and gratitude. Today, we witness the culmination of countless hours of dedication, passion and hard work from each and every one who graced this stage. We extend our deepest appreciation to all the performers, choreographers, musicians, debaters and everyone involved in making this show a resounding success. Your commitment, talent and hard work have really made this show an amazing and wonderful experience. To the management, our supportive teachers, mentors and staff, we express our heartfelt gratitude for nurturing and guiding these exceptional individuals, for believing in their abilities and for providing them with a platform to shine. Lastly, we extend our sincere appreciation to our wonderful audience, guests, parents, family members, friends and well-wishers who filled this venue with your energy, applause and encouragement. Your presence and support have made this show a truly memorable experience for everyone involved. As we bid farewell to this extraordinary show, let us carry with us the memories, the lessons learned and the sense of accomplishment that comes from dedicating ourselves to a shared vision. May the creativity, talent and camaraderie exhibited this day continue to inspire us to reach new heights and embrace the endless possibilities that lie ahead. Thank you all for being a part of this remarkable journey and may the spirit of this show forever ignite the spark of passion and excellence within each of us. Thank, Thank you. you.